working with motos is no simple feat. As it turns out, there are quite a few considerations that have to be in place before it works properly without damaging other components. Let's talk more about this after the break. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Today, I'd like to share with you a pretty interesting component that is often used in robotics and, well, electronics programming. And we're going to use this component in the context of driving a motor. There are several challenges when it comes to working with motos, uh, particularly if you're using a board like the Arduino. The first and biggest problem is you need a fair amount of voltage and current to drive a motor. Particularly on the current side of things, the Arduino doesn't put out a whole lot of current and making it drive the motor directly tends to be a bad idea because you may overload well, what the pins on the Arduino can actually provide. So that's problem number one. We would like to have some kind of external component to actually control the motor, giving it power from an external source. But we still want the Arduino to be able to control it, to switch that thing on or off. Our second challenge is that motors are, well, bi-directional. They can go forwards, but they can also go backwards. That's not too difficult of a thing to do in principle. All you need to do is to swap the voltage around. But again, how do we do that using the Arduino? Well, today, we're going to look at one component that solves both of these problems, and that is the H-Bridge motor driver. The way it works is brilliant, and it elegantly solves both the problems we've mentioned here. Let's start by looking at how this motor driver actually works on the inside. Its internal schematics explains why it gets its name. It looks like the letter H. So these four parts can be thought of as switches that are controlled by semiconductors. And the idea is this. The voltage here comes from the external source, ideal for driving the motor. While the opening and closing of these four switches can be driven by a lower power source, like something that comes out of an Arduino. That solves problem number one, because we're no longer tapping upon the power of the Arduino to drive the motor. But that's not the ingenious and cool part. It's the solution for problem number two that's really cool. Because guess what? With this setup, we can easily drive the motor in either direction. Watch what happens when I close these two switches. There is now a closed circuit here from plus going down and in the diagram going from left to right across the motor going back to ground. This drives the motor to run in one direction. Now, let's change things around and close the other two switches instead. Observe what happens here. Now, the other terminal of the motor is connected to the positive side. Now, on the diagram, the current is flowing from right to left. Because the terminals are now connected to power in the opposite manner, the motor is now rotating the other way. That's the genius of the H bridge. Depending on which switches you actually close, the motor goes in a different direction and it's being driven by an external power source. And there you go, that's the H bridge, a very smart way to, well, drive a motor. Now, let's end things off on a high note by taking a look at an actual physical example. What I have here on a breadboard is an actual each bridge motor driver chip. This chip actually consists of motor drivers on each side of the component. Its wiring looks something like this. On the one side, a voltage is provided by the microcontroller. So this is the signal voltage. The other voltage comes from an external source, which is used to drive the motors. We'll focus on one side of the component for now, but the two pins here labeled A receive control signals from the microcontroller, which tell it to, well, open and close a different set of those virtual switches. The two pins in the middle, called Y, are your output pins, which can then be connected to a motor. There is also an enable pin here, which switches that H bridge on or off. To take note, for this particular component, we are not able to control all four of those switches independently. Instead, 1A and 2A here, activate opposing sets of those switches. In conjunction with that, the enable pin also gives us another means of control. So let's see what happens when we toggle these controls around. Firstly, if none of these pins were given power, then what happens is, well, the circuit is not enabled. This means that none of these switches are on 
and as a result, the motor is essentially disconnected. We'll call this a neutral state since we're essentially not asking it to do anything. Now let's go ahead and give power to the enable pin. Once you do that, what you'll find is without activating any of the other pins, two of these switches are now closed. As such, the motor is connected to ground on both sides. This is considered to be a braking action. Now let's go ahead and activate 1A by giving it a voltage. Watch what happens. The one side now has the two switches flipped around. The top one closes, the bottom one opens, and this gives us a complete circuit through the motor, causing it to rotate in one direction. Now let's try something else by giving a voltage to 2A but not to 1A, and as you would expect, now everything is reversed around. On the 2 side, the upper switch closes and the lower one opens. This allows current to flow in the opposite direction, thus driving the motor in, well, the opposite direction. Finally, there is also one combination in which everything receives power. Well, this again is a braking state, but this time the motor is connected to a voltage on both sides. So yeah, this is the full set of actions you can create with this particular H-Bridge motor driver. So here I have a very simple bit of code that just tells it to go in one direction for two and a half seconds, stop, and then go in the opposite direction, and then stop again. Let's upload this code onto my Arduino, and let's see what happens. As you can see, I've stuck a bit of tape to this motor here so you can see exactly what it's doing. It goes in one direction, pauses, goes in the opposite direction, pauses again, and repeats the entire process. And that's it, that's exactly the behavior we wanted from it. What's cool about this motor driver is that, well, there's one on each side. So if you have a little robot car like this, you could easily use the same motor driver to drive both those wheels independently because, well, each motor driver can be controlled by its own set of control signals. And there you have it, that is the H-Bridge motor driver which solves several different problems in an ingenious way. That's all there is for this particular episode. I hope you've gained some insight today. But until next time, you're watching 0612TV with Nerfers.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video and are feeling generous, a donation to this channel will be greatly appreciated. There's a link on screen and in the video description for more details. Meanwhile, please do like, comment, and subscribe. This helps the channel tremendously and gives me the means to do more. Thank you once again, and I'll see you next time.